So this is Dimitri from Meyer Spare Motor. We're gonna talk about the Quickie. In this video, we're gonna cover some very important topics. We'll first take a step back and define what a Quickie is. Uh, we'll do it from a design perspective. So we'll cover what the design goals are, why it was designed the way it was, and how certain suggestions people made may not work. We'll talk about what the design change actually accomplishes and how in the end, now the Quickie is basically a different product. We'll talk about all the testing we did and the data that are produced. And finally, we'll draw some conclusions, uh, both from the testing data and from the general design change. All right, so let's take a step back and talk about what the hell is a Quickie to begin with. Obviously, it has a pretty clever locking mechanism uh, that is super easy to use, which makes it much faster. But the number one design goal was to have a low profile main hub that bolts to the engine so that the paramotor can get into tighter spaces for transport. So to achieve this goal, we need to do something different about this quick release from our last one. Because the pins do not go through, all the way through the prop, the clamping pressures that are produced by the upper mechanism need to be much higher, much, much, much higher. So a few people have said, well, why don't you just have pins from the other side? Um, it sounds clever at first, but it comes with two severe problems. They're suggesting something like this. You have a handle, you have the pins on this side, this is mounted to the engine, and then uh, you put the propeller on this, and then you screw this in, pins go in the hole, and then you have a quick release on this end. There are two fundamental problems. The first one is the usability one. Because this hub is, can only be so thick, the pins have to be different lengths for different propellers. In other words, there might be one for a helix that has shorter pins, E-props that has longer pins, and then if you have four blade props, three blade props, you might be out of question altogether. But there's a fundamental problem with this design. For these pins to go here, there needs to be clearance in the holes that the pins go into. If there was no clearance, the pins would not fit into those holes. So the holes need to be physically larger than the diameter of the pins for everything to go in. This is a big problem because in the center there's a thread. So this whole assembly can spin. So as the engine accelerates and decelerates, the only thing keeping the propeller in place is the center thread. So why is this problem? If this can move just a little bit, what ends up happening is you get destructive resonances. In other words, at some point, there's a resonance between the belt, the engine, and the propeller weight as it's trying to accelerate and decelerate. Um, it is really bad practice to put this assembly through that because everything here will resonate and the propeller will move at all times uh, just a little bit. Um, but this can break pins, this can cause all sorts of issues. So this is a terrible, from a design perspective, idea to begin with. The Quickie is now available for purchase. We haven't really had time to announce it officially or properly, uh, but it is on our website with the new metal plate. And uh, at this time, you're probably wondering, what does this new design change entail? Why do we do it? And what does it accomplish? So let's talk about what the design change actually accomplishes. In short, it increases the margin of safety for the Quickie, especially when it's misused. But a better way to look at it is it allows pilots with different physical abilities and or perceptions of what tight enough is to use the product safely. So as we look here, this is the original plastic plate that was in the earlier version of the Quickie. The way this works is the little pin, uh, the little short pins are part of the plastic plate and uh, they're primarily used for registration. So as you tighten the lever on the quickie, uh, these will pop into the propeller holes and the plate will stop moving and then the ratchet mechanism will start working. And so the primary function of this plate is to hold the mechanism, but also to spread the load from the center uh, screw and from the actual handle into the assembly. Okay, so if we take a look at the metal plate, uh, at first sight, it might look like it's the same thing, we just change materials, but actually this is not the case. There's a very big difference fundamentally between these two plates, and uh, I'll show you what that, that is. Uh, first of all, the plate is metal, and the metal is a structural material, 
And as you can see, we've elongated the pins. So they actually protrude through the carbon fiber layer into the propeller's core. We also added this cylinder in the center. So this cylinder is 25 millimeters, just like the hole in the prop. And it also goes uh, inside the center hole on the propeller. And so if we take a look from this perspective, uh, you can see now that there are uh, structural metal plates on both sides and there are pins uh, on both sides and there are cylinders on both sides that are all metal and as this lever on the quickie gets tightened um, the propeller is firmly supported by uh, metal parts from both sides and both sides go into the propeller core through the carbon skin. So this is very important because it fundamentally changes how the quickie operates and it makes it so the propeller can't move even if the lever does not have just the right amount of tension applied to it. So speaking of tension, we're doing a test here where we have a modified quickie with a nut that protrudes out of it and we're tightening the propeller as much as probably reasonable. And so what we can do is we can use a torque wrench to measure roughly how much uh, torque is applied by the quickie. And it's not a perfect test, but it gives us a very good idea. And so consistently between both the plastic or in the metal quickie, we achieved uh, 193 inch pounds. So as you can see here, the quickie moved just a little bit and then it uh, settled. And um, there's the torque, and uh, we can still undo the quickie and remove the prop. Um, we consistently achieved, actually on both plastic and the metal quickie, uh, right around 190 inch pounds of torque. Um, with the metal one, it was a little bit higher, we could get 193 or so, um, which is basically somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 21 and a half to 22 Newton meters. Um, which is actually a lot of force. Um, this is about as high as you physically want to go with a center bolt. Um, going much higher uh, puts the propeller at risk of damage, uh, like the actual foam core and the carbon can start to get damaged. Now, I want to be clear, I'm going to show some pictures of other quick releases. Uh, this is not meant to criticize any of them at all. What I'm illustrating here is that the Quickie has a much larger lever than a lot of them. So like this guy here, it's, it would be physically impossible to create the same kind of clamping pressures um, that the quickie lever allows you to do. Same here, this is a new one by SP140. The handle's pretty small. This is one of the old school quick releases that exists. Um, what's interesting about this one is you will also notice that they use uh, short pins. I thought that was kind of interesting, so we know that that works. Um, but again, you can see that here, the area that your hand actually grips um, is pretty small, so it would be really difficult to achieve anywhere close to a similar kind of torque uh, that we get on the Quickie. This one is a pretty big diameter quick release, and uh, this is actually one of the better releases on the, or quick releases on the market. Um, but you have to grab, grab it with your palm, essentially, and whole hand, and so it would also be very difficult to apply as much torque. And finally, there's this, which is kind of a disaster. <laughs> this should not exist, guys. In short, the best you're going to get out of this is finger tight, <laughs> which is a scary proposition for a quick release on a propeller. Uh, the initial testing we did when we first got back included this test, where we basically intentionally over tightened the quickie but it shows that uh, the clamping forces are primarily focused on the center of the quickie. And so even though the force that the plastic quickie and the metal quickie can generate are fairly similar, where that force actually goes does vary between the two models. In other words, the metal plate is able to more effectively transfer all those forces across the face of the propeller. We also did a test which established how much uh, torque can be applied to the plastic quickie and uh, in a couple of days we did the same test uh, on the same setup with the metal plate after it was finished. All right let's look at some clamping forces. This is kind of important. Um, so here we have a handy engineering 
table for bolts and what forces they produce at different torques. It's important to mention uh, what's called the K-factor. The K-factor is essentially how, how much friction there is between the bolt and the surface it's being tightened to. K-factor of 17 in this table is considered lubricated and K-factor of 20 is considered uh, steel. Now, the quickies, I set a K-factor to 18 because they are actually lubricated with the metal plates. So there's a little bit of a silicone grease between the metal plate and the plastic handle. But it's also plastic on metal, which should be fairly slippery. But there is a good amount of surface area. So I kind of picked a number that's a little bit higher than the K factor here, even though I suspect it's possible that it might be actually lower than um, 0 0.18. So here I calculated K factor of 18 from both of these numbers. Um, I could have done a range and gotten a better picture, but whatever. We'll call it on the high end 11.7 .7, and for this one 27.9, which means at K factor 18, which is what we're using, you would take 27.9 uh, foot pounds of torque to achieve this number. And from there, we can calculate the actual forces that the quickie produces here. So quickie's tightening torque we established is 193 inch-pounds, which is 16.8 foot-pounds. We get mm, 2875. From this side, we get 2847. We'll just round it down and call it a nice and even 2800 pounds or so. Again, all these numbers are relative because there's some factors we don't know, like how much the K factor actually is. Um, but I suspect this is fairly accurate to the, the amount of clamping force that the Quakey can produce. My car is a Subaru Outback and it's about 3,600 pounds. So, I mean, you can imagine this as like a large portion of that weight being pressed in the center of the propeller, which is a lot of clamping force. Let's do the same test for prop bolts. There's six prop bolts. And so even though the individual load that each bolt can produce, um, because there's six of them, uh, that number is gonna be much higher than the quickie. This table only uses the maximum K factor of 0 0.20, which is steel on steel with no lubrication. Um, so that data is here, but we're not doing steel on steel. We're doing steel into anodized aluminum. And the K factor for that is kind of conflicting depending on what source you look at. The bolt goes through carbon fiber and foam and uh, anodized aluminum plate on the other side. And so there's a lot of friction between the bolt and the propeller. And so the K factor is actually probably higher. So I don't wanna make a definitive call between which one of these two is correct. We'll just call that a range. So I put a K factor of 0 0.24 and a K factor of 0 0.26. And so the calculations are here. Um, with a K factor of 0 0.24, we get about 1,250 pounds. And a K factor of 0 0.26, we get 961 pounds, 961 and a half pounds um, per bolt. All right, so these are the numbers uh, that we say are the total clamping force created by the bolts. You can see that even on the lower side of the spectrum, it's more than double of what the quickie produces. But uh, this is only a part of the story. Okay, so here's probably the most important study we did. Um, showing clamping forces and calculations is important, but it doesn't actually tell us how much holding power that produces because those forces go into completely different places between the prop bolts and the quickie. And so we set up a fixture that allows us to apply torque to a modified propeller. On that modified propeller, the holes are drilled out oversized, which means the propeller can actually rotate on the hub by a few degrees or a couple of degrees rather. And so by applying torque onto one of the blades through a scale, we can actually measure how much force it takes for the propeller to slip. And so when the prop bolts are torqued to spec and the quickie and the metal quickie are tightened uh, to an appropriate place, um, we can take several tests and take averages of what those tests produce to show essentially how much 
holding force um, these different mounting methods produce. This test is not perfect by any means, but it, is, it does give us a really good idea. And so this is super cool because you would expect that because the quickie's center bolt only produces about half the clamping forces of prop bolts uh, in total, you would expect that the number or the amount of actual holding power it has is also half, but in actuality it's almost double. And this seems really counterintuitive, and it's actually really obvious. What matters is not just how much clamping forces something produces, but also where those forces go. And so let me show you what that means. Okay, so we are looking at a picture of an EPROP. Uh, this applies to the Viterazzi propeller. Um, I'm not going to talk about the Helix propeller because the Helix propeller is really dense. It's also really thin, which means on a quickie, um, the metal pins go almost all the way through uh, the whole prop, and all carbon layers have some pin material going through them from both sides now, and so it's not relevant for this discussion. When you add six bolts, what happens is that force that we calculated is applied where the bolts are, and it's spread out. This is actually not very accurate because I'm just showing where the bolts are. But in actuality, the plate would help spread it, so it wouldn't be these points, it would be kind of spread across the plate too. But what's important to see here is that all of that force primarily is focused actually on the hollow part of the propeller. It's in the where the holes are drilled, uh, it's a couple of layers of carbon on each blade, and then uh, foam core on the inside. So this this is all flexible, so even though there's a lot of force being applied here, it's applied on a flexible surface. And so it gets worse, actually, when you look at uh, this model of EPROP, which is for the 2.87 reduction. The hub on them is actually quite a bit bigger, and so you end up having more flat area and more core where the bolts are. And so the prop bolt's holding pressure is lower. On the Quickie, there is a plastic um, cone-shaped part on the handle and it transfers forces basically all the way in this gray area in the center so all the way up to those ridges almost um, and so if you look at it here that black circle represents basically where that plastic part ends so how is this different and why does this produce uh, essentially higher holding forces well it's actually pretty simple if you look at the center portion of the prop this is where the vertical layers of the carbon are. And so all of this stuff here has vertical carbon faces that run on both blades of the prop. And so even though the forces that the quickie applies are quite a bit lower, um, they're applied on a much stiffer portion of the prop. Okay, so here's one more very important graph. This is the same graph as above. You can see the same three lines. Uh, we added two more sets of tests, two more sets of averages from tests, uh, where we intentionally under tightened the quickie. And so you can see the yellow dashed line is the plastic quickie basically falling out of the chart um, and the clamping pressure dropping a lot. Um, and what's good to see is that the metal quickie has uh, still fairly high holding pressures even compared to the prop bolts, it is a little bit lower. Um, so what this shows is that even when the quickie is pretty drastically misused, where it still creates very high forces for holding. Now, um, this brings up a very important point that this line is way down here and it started out way up here. So it's extremely important uh, to adequately tighten the quickie. Uh, one of the things we're gonna do is actually add a tool that allows you to tighten the quickie tighter. Um, we'll ship the stool specifically to pilots who are maybe not as physically fit or smaller and have a hard time uh, tightening the quickie a lot. And so again, to add another layer of safety um, so everybody can use this safely. Uh, we are thinking about developing a new tool. All right, so we're reaching towards the end of the video. At this point, we've talked about how the Quickie works, what the design goals were. Um, I've gone over all the testing that we did uh, and all the calculations and uh, talked about the design change in great detail. So from all of that information, we can now draw some conclusions. So let's start with the holding power. Both 
the metal and old plastic quickies offer significantly higher holding power than prop bolts, confirming the original design goal. This happens because the quickie creates higher clamping forces spread from the center of the hub to the face where the prop has a much stiffer structure, instead of the flat part of the hub where it's more flexible, like the prop bolts. The metal quickie does a better job of spreading forces to the rest of the propeller face, and not just focused in the center like on the plastic one. Additional holding power works hand in hand with the metal features that now support the propeller from both sides. The metal quickie can offer high clamping forces even when not adequately tightened. Uh, however, of course, the quickie should always be tightened as much as possible. That should go without saying, that also applies to propeller bolts. They should always be torqued to spec, and any other quick release should always be tightened as much as possible. Moving on to conclusions about safety. The new metal plate is a structural part which features longer pins and a new center cylinder, which makes it an active part of the holding mechanism. The propeller is tightly clamped and now secured through the carbon skin and into the core and held captive from both sides. These changes make the quickie work in a fundamentally different way. The metal plate does a much better job at transferring pressure from the center to the rest of the face of the propeller. We're considering developing a new tool to help less physically able pilots tighten and loosen the quickie to higher clamping forces. However, this tool will not be recommended to average or stronger pilots because it could actually result in clamping forces that are too high. Moving on to usability. The metal quickie can be safely tightened a lot with the large handle without damaging the handle or the propeller. The metal quickie is also more intuitive to use and is much easier to tighten and loosen to higher tension from the plastic model. The metal quickie addresses some difficulties loosening the mechanism. We made the ratchet ridges more shallow and the handle rotates with ease now. The recommended tightening procedure is to always tighten the quickie as tight as possible while still being able to loosen using the correct procedure. The quickie should always be loosened only using the correct procedure. And for more info on that, please see the video we released that talks about how to use the quickie correctly. I want to thank you for watching this pretty long video and uh, receiving all the information. I'm going to leave you with the following message. Iris Paramotor will always continue to improve and develop new products to give you the best paramotors and accessories we can possibly offer. The safety of our products is always our highest priority. We revisit our entire product line at the end of every year and release major updates at the beginning of the following year, even for products that already work great. We also implement smaller changes at any given moment, sometimes without any notice, when we can see that a small change can improve usability or safety of our products. We also regularly adopt suggestions from our distributors and customers when we determine that these changes can physically be implemented into our product line.